man walks into a bar and says to the barman, Hi, I'll have a National Treasures, please. The barman says, What's that? The man says, It's very simple. It's one shot of Will Duggan, a lovely, bitter sour. Then I'll have one shot of Laura Lex, a sweet, cool little shot. Mix them together over ice, serve with a lime garnish to create the most delicious interview series ever created. No worries, that'll be £24, says the barman, because his bar is in London. Welcome! Yay! Oh, I would pay £24 for a cocktail in an actual bar about now. That's the stage of lockdown I'm in. How are you today, Will Duggan? I'm really good, thank you. I've got a new jumper. I invented a it's cocktail. It's lovely. Thank you. We were, we were trying to discuss the... Uh... Khaki, yeah, you, that's the you thought that was puce. I'd say that's more, it's a soft green to me. I thought puce was a soft green. Yeah. Um, but apparently it's purple. Yeah, I think so, because people say, like, oh, it's turning puce with anger, or like choking on something, you turn puce. Yes, well, yes, I know that now, but. Um... Did your dad ever call you a mean puce? That was my dad's favourite insult when we were little. Oh, you mean puce. No, he didn't. He'd often call me an ungrateful little shit. <laughs> Oh, no. my Happy da- childhood. My dad watched these videos. He didn't. I was doing that for Comic Effect. He's a very John, is it John Duggan's your dad, isn't it? It is. Hello, John. Yeah, he's one of the only people that ever emails the National Treasures email address. Nationaltreasures at gmail.com. If no. you're anyone. Is it not? No. Oh, God. no wonder nobody ever emails us. I can never give out the wrong. My oh, father. Is it National... My National father. Treasures podcast at gmail.com. Yes, that's the image that my father occasionally emails. Uh, how are you, Laura? I thought you were going to say hello to your dad. <laughs> no. How are you, John? <laughs> He's my dad. I haven't got to do it over YouTube. I've got his number. Whoa, show off. Um, I'm all right, thanks, mate. Um, yeah, I, I'm i not my best, I'm not my worst, but I'm excited to do another interview. These are the highlight of my week at the moment. Let me, yeah, 100%. <laughs> It's um, it's been a lovely sunny day in Brighton today. It really reminded me of when we went to Devil's Dyke for the first ever episode of the podcast. And you remember it was like really blue and crisp and sort of, it was slippy. about this time of year, wasn't it? Yeah, it was quite slippy though. Yeah, yeah. And I imagine it was slippy today. I took the dog for a walk up on the hill and just the hill round where I live, you get like you're as far out of Brighton as you can get. So if you turn round, you can just see the South Downs and the the sort of parkland, but then you can also see the I-360 and the whole of the city in the little valley and the sea. So you can really see everything Brighton is from this one little spot and it just blew the blew the cobwebs away, as my mother would say. That's nice. I, yeah. was, at, I was at Stansted Airport. Um, you could see the runway and it really blew the carbon footprint <laughs> away. <laughs> Well, to brighten up your day after a day at Stansted, we have a returning guest joining us on the National Treasures interview series today. Um, She's back to tell us more about Scotland's finest stuff. You'll remember her from the first ever interview we did, the fantastic Dr. Kate Stevenson. I got so excited there, I I flipped my (laughs) scarf over my shoulder. Hello, Doctor is Doctor of School Uniforms, which is still my favourite thing in the whole world. (laughs) Oh, it really looks like your lamp is spying on you like a creep. Oh, really? Like, look behind you, it's like... (laughs) Oh, yeah, of course it is. Um, how are you? How have you been in the month since we last saw oh, you? Oh gosh, I'm I'm good. I'm in my own flat, which is very exciting. Right. And yeah, not <laughs> in one that looks vaguely like a spaceship. Uh, yeah, no, I'm excellent, um, and it's nice to be back. Oh, yes, thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Uh, and last time we discussed Gladstone's Land. Mm-hmm. Um, where are we off to today? So we are going to another Edinburgh property, which actually links in really nicely with Gladstone's Land, which is the Georgian House, which is over in the New Town. OK, right. I know nothing about this. So, New Town of Edinburgh. Yes. It's a house. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me put Laura out of her misery. Kate, for people not like me and Laura, who definitely know all about this, for people who might not know, could you give us a quick who, what, when, where, why about the yes, Georgian house? Of course. So uh, I mentioned this in the last episode. Um, so go and watch that if you haven't. Nice. Sorry, I just need to pause you for one second. Will, there's going to be the oddest sound on my microphone there. That was my stomach. I don't want to have any conversations about it. Sorry, Kate, continue. 
<laughs> uh, right, yes. Um, so I talked briefly about the new town. The new town uh, was built from the 1760s, 1770s onwards, right through until the early 1800s. And as it was built, all of these wealthy people moved from the old town to the new town. And they went from living in houses that had three, four rooms in flats uh, to huge grand houses that maybe had 15 rooms. So they could afford so much more space, so much more light. Uh, the streets were much cleaner. There was a lot more uh, in terms of um, opportunities to socialize. It was a lot grander. Uh, so of course, everyone that could afford it, off they went to the new town. And the Georgian house is one of those houses and it is particularly grand. It's at the um, far end of the new town. So the bit that was built last mm -hmm. uh, on Charlotte Square. So for anyone that might have been to Edinburgh during the festival, um, it's where the book festival is. Okay, yeah. Uh, so it's it's right down that end on that big, very grand square where you get all of the tents in the middle. Uh, and uh, it is, yeah, it's just a particularly opulent example of a new town townhouse. And it is kitted out as the original, the first owner, the original owner would have had it. Um, so that was a chap called uh, John Lamont, who was the 18th chief of Clan Lamont, who decided to come up to Edinburgh and spend all of his money successfully marrying off his children and living way above his means. Ooh. I, can, this I can get bored of that. Yeah, yeah. Absolute social world. So he bought the house in 1796 and he lived there through till his death in 1816. Um, so it's really this, this quite decadent period as well. It's a good chunk of the Regency. Uh, and, so, and so, yeah, it's, it's all about uh, the social world at this period and mm. big parties and the theatre and balls. No, it's very, it's very Jane Austen. So this oh, house is really oh. this perfect like capsule of that period. Brilliant. That was superb. So I, th I think, Laura, we can agree. We knew that. Sure. Absolutely. Yes. We, we are always talking about John Lamon. <laughs> I mean, he's who I, I start conversations with normally, to be honest. <laughs> Do you know John Lamont, they say? And they say yes. And I go, great, let's get a, a tenant because we keep a Scottish connection. <laughs> People who haven't heard of him are, quite frankly, lamentable. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> we'll edit that out, don't we? We won't. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so I actually did a bit of research about the, the house, Kate, and I came across this guy, John Lamont. Uh, who I, I, I didn't know about, I was lying beforehand. Uh, and you said he, he was a clan chief, the 18th yes. clan chief of the clan Lamont. Lamont, Lamont. Uh, Lamont, Lamont I believe. Sorry. That's how I've been told it's pronounced. Do, are there still like clan chiefs and yes. clans in Scotland? Yes. So they have a big meetup, or they did until there was a pandemic. They have a big meetup every year, like the clan meetup. Um, it's become the Americans are really, really into it. Right. Uh, but they they no, they still have these big meetups. There was a whole thing where Outlander fan Outlander fans wanted to become a clan in their own right and set up, and it was rejected. There's a, there's a board I believe that like governs. I don't know a huge amount about it. That governs like who gets to be a clan, and they rejected the Outlander fans as being a clan in their own but right. They should do it, but not tell everyone because then they'd be clandestine. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. I enjoyed that a lot, Will Duggan. Well done. Because I suppose that's a question I had really. Because the new town, um, like you say, it's Charlotte Square, who was so it's George the Third, isn't it? Who's yes. in charge. And and all of the new town is very sort of named after George Street, Princess Street, Charlotte Street, Hanover. Um, but we're we're only like 50 years after the Jacobite rebellion and the sort of crushing of the clan. So was there not like massive anger at it being such a, like, do you know what I mean? Or were the posh people it's... all like Englishy? So Edinburgh was always quite English orientated. Right. Um, and this was really a show of how into England they were with the new town. So yes, there's still a lot of ill content, particularly further further north in Scotland but in Edinburgh they're really trying to be part of North Britain and okay. they're trying to show really how into the royalty they are and how into the union they are and that's what those names are after so oh. it's a very sort of um almost propaganda interesting okay does that have any sort of like echoes down to modern Scotland because you know I don't want to get too political like you know but 
there is a big resurgence for a second independence referendum and uh, Scottish, the Scottish National Party are in charge of Scotland. And is there any issue with the echoes of the English aristocracy being so in charge that it affects the yes, day? Absolutely. So all of this, could, you could trace so much of this back to the Act of Union and what happened before the Act of Union. And, and I think there is a direct route between that and some of the things that are going on now. And of course, you know, people don't remember it, but there's there's a sentiment that becomes attached to it and has been passed down almost. Uh, and I think there were a lot of Scots at the time of the Act of Union who felt that it wasn't the right thing or that they'd almost been put in an impossible position with it because they, they'd they been backed into a corner. They'd had a series of very bad harvests. They'd had um, a lot of trade agreements um, that they weren't allowed to trade with certain people because of English rule um, and English pressure. Um, they'd had a huge disaster with the Darien scheme, which was this trading scheme that Scotland set up. Um, so they, they basically felt that they'd been backed into a corner with a lot of pressure that had been put on by other countries and particularly England. Um, and I think there is still, still that thread that you can trace down today. Mm. This may be a stupid question also. Um, Obviously, the new town was built around this time. Mm -hmm. The old town was there beforehand. I understand the concepts of new and old. But what was in the new town before? Was it just farmland? What was going just, on? It was just open countryside and farmland. Uh, there was nothing there. There's some amazing views from before the new town was built that you can actually just see. You can see the old town and just rolling countryside. Um, and you can see right out to Leith as well, which is a completely separate mm. entity until 1920, uh, cool? which is now completely connected. As a bakery in Leith that never shuts. It's an absolute banger if you're hungover. Or, st or still drunk. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think we've got our heads round the new town. Let's mm -hmm. talk about the house. Yeah. Yes. I'm gonna... What's the this, this type of stone that new town is built in, that the house is built in, that sort of sandy grey? What type of stone is that? Is it a local stone? Oh, gosh. So the stone, my understanding is the stone for the house comes from local quarries. I think there's one out at Craig Miller. Um, so, yeah, a lot of it seems to have come in locally. Yeah. OK. Right. The new town is built in the Georgian period. So I'd imagine that every house built there could be called the Georgian house. Completely true, yes. Why does this house get that accolade? <laughs> because it's owned by the National Trust, <laughs> essentially. Uh, and it still looks like the Georgian period inside. Right. Uh, so you can go in, you can visit the basement, which is the servants' quarters, the first, uh, the ground floor, the first floor and the second floor are all open to the public. And you can get a real sense of how the family lived. Um, and they've each room is set out with all its period furniture from that period of ownership from John Lamont. So it's a real sort of Georgian Regency experience. So give us a sense of like, so we walk in through the front doors and we're in a sort of entrance hall, I guess. Hallway, what yes. colours are we looking at? Is it is it gold ceilings or is it like so patterns George, and prints? What the, the Georgian period is all about symmetry. Uh, oh, so okay. everything is really, and if you think about Newtown, um, if any, anyone's yeah. been there, it's, it's very symmetrical. It's about these big sort of square, or rectangular houses with windows that perfectly match on either side of the front door. So to, if you're standing outside the Georgian house, actually, if you look at the long row, it's a big terrace. Uh, and if you look at it, it actually looks like one massive palace. It's designed oh, by a man called ooh. Robert Adam, and it's called Palace Fronted uh, for exactly that reason. So the house in the middle is made to look like the entryway to this massive oh. long palace. And actually, the house in the middle, also owned by the National Trust, Nicola Sturgeon's uh, official residence. So that's what? Next, just next door. Yeah. New house. That's cool. New house. Yes. New house. Uh, so the National Trust owned 567 and Georgian House is at number seven. And you let the First Minister squat in your we, we do. Yes. <sighs> it's really bizarre going in the back door to the Georgian House. And there, there's, you know, there's, there's the back of our house right there. I've, I've just, I've been here. Um, I've, only because I've got a, I've got a coach a tour of the city that starts in a new town and you start, you drive 10 metres, the guy stops and goes, that's Nicola Sturgeon's house. <laughs> um, Hello, uh, welcome to the advert bit in the middle, but slightly different because it's just me. Uh, during the recording of the advert, 
Laura and I made a little mess up and uh, she wasn't in it. Uh, so we thought we'd do another take, but unfortunately, Laura is super hungover today and can't bear being on screen. So I'm taking it on myself. And that's fine. I'm basically doing a solo album. I'm like Dave Grohl, pre Foo Fighters, post Nirvana. Um, we have so many patrons to thank this week. Uh, we've actually reached the amount of patrons now that you may know. Uh, our goal was to get to 25 and years and years of the super secret patron only podcast would go weekly rather than fortnightly. That has now happened. So it'll be happening going forward. Um, the next goal is 50 patrons where once we get that, we're going on a week long sojourn to do video and podcast content just for the patrons. Uh, but now thank some absolute top class legends. Firstly, but not most importantly, or least importantly, it's a socialist kind of thing, is Tom Heaton, one of my genuinely oldest friends in the world. Cheers, Tom. Thank you also, Kiara. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Overtune. Thank you twice, because Overtune is actually lives in America and said, don't bother sending me my welcome pack. It's too much postage. But then he upped how much money he wants to go on Patreon and says, actually, I want my stuff now. And we respect that, Overtune. We love your hustle. Uh, and thank you also to Matthew. Um, if you want to be a top legend, you can join our Patreon at... Uh, Patreon.com forward slash National Treasures. And you can keep me in Marks and Spencer's Pina Colada cans because I'm a fancy boy. Uh, anyway, genuinely, thank you so much. Uh, thoughts and prayers for Laura and her awful hangover. Back to us, sober. What's your favourite painting in the, in the Georgia? Because it's got quite a lot of that oh, painting, doesn't it? It's got so many paintings. So, yes, you go to the Georgia house. <laughs> you can narrow it down to a top answer. three if you like. <laughs> <laughs> you, you go in and uh, on the ground floor there is the dining room and it is absolutely wall-to-wall -wall paintings because it's a very public space so you would have had all your favourite paintings up there. And the original to the house although they do have a copy of one of John Lamont up in the hall. Uh, there are some really lovely uh, Rayburns um, who's a Scottish artist. Uh, the sunglasses. I, I thought favorite, you meant like Argus. <laughs> So funny story, I'm going to completely incriminate my boss here, but my boss was in a meeting and he's not, uh, he, he's an amazing business manager, but he uh, comes from sort of commerce and the commercial sort of hospitality. Uh, he was sitting in a meeting where they talked about the Rayburn and it was just like a room full of Argos and he got really confused. Um, <laughs> That's exactly what uh, Yeah. Uh I I do not get this reference. It's the first reference. thing you have. You're like, why, why are they moving the Argos? Yeah. <laughs> like, so anyway, he was a uh, Scottish painter. Uh, and there is an amazing, um, there's a, a wonderful image of an older lady. And she's still a little bit glamorous, but she's also, um, also a little bit older. Um, and I just really love it because it's not one of those really sort of wizened depictions of age. Yeah, nice. She's got a little bit of a little bit of to her. And that's, that's in the dining room. What's the Rayburn? Arga, what's the reference there? Oh, a Rayburn is a type of stove and home heating thing like an Arga. Right. I made a sunglasses joke. That's very much two from worlds there colliding, isn't it? <laughs> so was it just uh, John Lamont, the, the uh, not the Earl, the Laird, the clan chief? <laughs> was he the only owner before it went to, the, like, or was it had many different? No, it's uh, it's had a whole range of different owners before the, the trust took it over. So uh, after John Lamont, uh, they sold it on um, after he died um, in 1817 uh, to a woman called Catherine Farquharson, uh, who, yeah, good name, hope I've pronounced <laughs> it right, uh, who owned it until the mid 19th century. And then it went through a number of other owners after that. Uh, and it was picked up by the trust in the 20th century. But it has been kept in the, the way it is now is the way it would have been when it was John so, Lamont. Yes and no. So a lot of the furniture isn't original to the house. Um, so when the trust took it over, it, a lot of the original fittings were still in. So the fireplaces and the decoration, um, but all the furniture had gone. Uh, so they took it over. They used it as offices. They've used it for all sorts of stuff and then they restored it. Mm. Um and they've tried to restore it as closely as possible to what it would have been, including putting the rooms in the right places and um, restoring the decoration as closely as they could, checking what the original colour of paints were and things like that. Nice. I'm assuming, though, it's like plumbed and electric now. When it, would it that is, have happened in it? Now, well, when uh, John Lambert first bought it, it didn't have running water and it didn't have flushing toilets. Uh, so they actually have this, you can still see it, it's called the receiver, 
uh, which is a flushing toilet but without running water. So it's essentially a tank that you have to fill with a jug and then it's a, an enamel bowl and that runs into like a copper box bowl underneath. Uh, so it is a flushing toilet. You can flush it. Water flushes through the bowl and into the copper box. But then a servant still has to come along and empty okay. the <laughs> copper box. So, you, so you've so, just got a, an enamel bowl full of turd and then seconds later, a copper box full of wet turd. That's exactly <laughs> how it works. All but right. it's not in the bowl anymore and you can't see it. And so it's a step up on chamber pots. Yeah. Okay. But yes, still a, more work even for the servants. Uh, and we better know, than the... Oh, Sorry, better than the Gardy Lou situation that we learned about in the old town in the in the first episode. Absolutely, Wonderful. absolutely. So I'm no, no, no poo on the streets, uh, <laughs> and because uh, it was absolutely forbidden <laughs> in the new town. And um, imagine you need to write that down. Listen, guys. <laughs> I know, right? But they did. Could we? Uh, I'm just going to say it now. Could we just stop shitting in the street in the nice new town? <laughs> if you want to shit in the street. The Royal Mile's there. Knock yourself out. <laughs> Gardy Lou, but not here. So, um, my last question, I suppose, is, is it, like, if we're coming, we're coming to Edinburgh and we're having a day out and we're going to go and see Gladstone's Land mm -hmm. and the Georgian House in one day, um, how many rooms, how many bedrooms would it have had originally? Like, how big is it inside? It is, it is big. So there's a bedroom on the ground floor that's set up. That would have been the big showpiece for the uh, for the, the couple that owned it. Um, then there would have been children's bedrooms, nurseries upstairs. Uh, so there would probably have been two or three of those because some of the children might have shared. Um, and then you've also got all the servants' bedrooms because a lot of the servants would have lived on site. And we're going from a situation in the new town where you might have had one or two servants to uh, in the old town to the new town where you might have anywhere between five and eight. Wow. So they also need somewhere to sleep. So there would have been uh, individual rooms for the butler, for the cook, if it was a housekeeper also for the housekeeper. And then there would have been shared bedrooms for many of the other servants. Some of them might have lived nearby, but certainly the senior servants and probably a lot of the other ones would have lived on site as well. Wow. So yeah, That's a lot big. of bedrooms. And then of course the guest bedroom as well. Yeah. Natch. <laughs> of course, yeah. Barely goes without saying. Yes, of course. Uh, I mean, you're there for the entertaining. You have to be able to put people up. They go and stay with... No, they probably wouldn't have been a First Minister of Scotland. We've discussed the, uh, <laughs> not, not the Act of Union and the issues there within. Right, let's avoid that bullet. Woof. <laughs> um, Kate, have you got some questions for us? Yes, Uh so, I, well, I've got, a, I've got a niche one and I've got a quite Ooh. a wide one. Uh, so let's start with the niche one. Uh, so I mentioned the dining room. Just the room. two. I can have more than that. No, no, it's just want. if it's two, it really puts the peril on this quiz because I am far <laughs> behind in this bloody quiz. I don't think I've, I've won about one in the, all the episodes you've done. There are so many options for doing well on the second one, though. It's, it's a multi-answer question. Mm. Great. Uh, so the first one is about mealtimes. So I talked about the dining room on the first floor. Uh, and this is a period where mealtimes move around. Uh, so when would you have eaten dinner in the late 18th century, early 19th century? Would what some people call dinner, some people call tea, have been the meal you're referring to? Or is it like dinner is the 4am like whelk and you're trying to catch me out? What are you talking about? Well, I'm just checking that what... Kate is referring to as dinner. She's is it trying... like lunch or? or tea? Well, I think, I think that's the question I'm asking. Okay. Yeah, so they say, actually, that's a very, very good question. I'm going to say dinner. 2.30 p.m. 6, 7 p.m. Ooh, interesting. So actually somewhere in the middle. Um, ah. <laughs> so this is the period that, that dinner moves from being about 2 p.m., in the 18th century, so pretty pretty close, well, uh, to being about five, six o'clock in the Regency. Uh, and then by the mid 19th century, it's, you know, 8 p.m. in fashionable households. Uh, and essentially, prior 
so during the, the 17th, 18th century, you would have um, two big meals. Well, a big meal, which would be would be dinner, which would be essentially a late lunch. You might have a small breakfast before that, and then you would have a, a fairly light supper, but your big meal would be about two o'clock. Um, and then sort of right at this turn of the 18th century, early 19th century is where everything starts to move around um, and dinner moves later. And then you get lunch coming in, um, you keep breakfast, uh, and then and then gradually it, it throughout the early 19th century it moves later and later um, and becomes this sort of later later night by sort of 8 p.m. For the next one, there's opportunity for lots of points. So I've touched on it a little bit. Um, some of the things that they might have been doing to socialise, but there was this huge industry grew up in the new town about ways, new exciting ways to socialise. What might what might the Lamonts have been doing in the new town with their family to meet other people? Hunting. Opera. Uh, Would they have gone promenading in the park, like just walking up and down the parks together? Anonymous um, sex. I'm trying to think of things that are nearby. So you're like, you've got Arthur's seat. I don't know if they'd have gone mountain climbing. Did or they like... go ballooning? Would they have sailed? What about getting involved in fashion? Um, you've, you've missed dancing, which is the obvious one. Ah, oh, yeah. In so Bridgerton, the... they do a lot of boxing. Uh, so yeah, lots and lots. And then the other thing is, uh, I suppose, curiosities. Uh, so up on Carlton Hill really became the centre of that, uh, which is th this, this big hill, um, not as big as Arthur's Seat um, in Edinburgh, which has this bizarre collection of buildings on top. It's got an observatory and then a weird monument. Um, is that the one? So if you're on the the George the, the the bridge that goes over the railway station, and you're looking yes. towards the new town, it's to your right as yes. you look. Yeah, yeah, it, it's yeah. that weird, and it's got all these buildings on top. Yeah, of yeah. A big half-finished monument called the Nation's Shame because they ran out of money. Yeah. Uh, yes, that one. So if you go up there, there used to be the camera obscura up there, which is this clever bit of kit where you sort of reflect the countryside. You can still go and see it. It's in. It's on the Royal Mile, just near Gladstone's Land. But that used to be up um, Carlton Hill, so you could go and go and look at that. There was a big exhibition of um, weird plaster casts, so the Madame Two Swords of the day. Uh, and of course there were less less pleasant exhibitions as well there were freak shows um you could visit asylums um there were animals were put on display exotic animals um so there was there was an underside to all of that as well um, um will did you make any sense of recording who got what points there because i didn't i was listening <laughs> here's what i'm going to do i'm going to watch it back i'll just award points as i see fit and you'll have to watch this video when it goes out to see who won or not. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming back to join us, uh, Dr. Kate Stevenson. So to sum up, uh, we are talking about the Georgian house uh, uh, in the new town in Edinburgh, which people should be able to visit from late spring into summer, hopefully, depending late on... May is what we're aiming for, yes. but we'll see. Depending on lockdown restrictions. And who who's yeah. it good for? Is it... Um, is can, can you get in if you're not on your feet? Can you... So how are we looking? It's much more accessible than Gladstone's Land. Um, it is still stairs, but it is big, broad stairs with a good solid handrail. Um, so it, it's easier to get up and down them. Um, it's not, it's a little bit more um, look and don't touch. Um, so probably not great for small kids, although there are some really fun activities up on the second floor, um, some coloring and some things you can get involved in, um, clothes you can try on, which I love. Um, but it is a little bit more hands off. Um, I would say it's a really good partner piece with Gladstone's Land because you can see like posh old town living and then you can see posh new town living. Nice. Um, and it, it's if you like good interior design and opulence and you want a real sense of how the other half live. I, I know I like wandering in there and thinking one day all of this shall be mine, <laughs> knowing it never will be. Great. It's, it's just really nice for a bit of, you know, fancying somebody else's house.
Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Like, like we don't all spend every evening on Zoopla just looking at houses we can't afford. House, we can never afford. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it is absolutely like that. You think I I could have a party in this parlour uh, and you can, you know, and if you go. And it turns you out can... you're going to have a party and Will and I are coming. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Perfect. Honestly, the library at New Hales, you would not believe. Two stories. of Ah, oh. <sighs> yes. So that's what that's where that'll be. And does it have a uh, any social medias that people can uh, follow yes. it on? So the Georgian House is on all of the normal social media channels. Um, they're a bit quiet at the moment because most of their staff are furloughed just because the property's shut. Um, but uh, yes, you can absolutely follow the Georgian House and see what they're up to. Great. And we'll put those links in the video for people to do that. We'll also put your links in because I follow you on Twitter and you are fascinating. <laughs> fascinating <laughs> weird insights into my life yeah it just depends uh thank you so much dr kate um and if you think of any other areas in scotland edinburgh or anywhere we'll have you back to talk about that because of course yeah, i'll know. i'll have a think uh, next, next time i get to go on a jaunt somewhere i'll be like yes i'll, come, I'll talk to you about brody castle uh, there you yeah. go, brody castle uh, <laughs> lovely thank you so much thank you so much uh thank goodbye. you for having me back and there we go Dr. Kate Stevenson and the Georgian House, Charlotte Square, Edinburgh. Yay. Thank you very much for watching another interview for me, Laura Lex, and him. Nope, other way around, probably. Oh. Yep, that way. Perfect. Well, me. Now it just looks like I'm pointing off his screen. And him, Will Duggan. Um, we are National Treasures. You can check out our podcast. If you haven't already heard Series 1, we're currently working on Series 2. So get subscribed and you'll have that downloading as soon as it's ready. Um, also, find us on Patreon, uh, where you can watch extra bits from all of these videos. There is about 10 minutes of extra material for you to watch from each one. And also, our bonus extra podcast, the Years and Years podcast, which is where we discuss one single year in history and everything that happened in that year that we found vaguely interesting. That is available to see on Wikipedia. <laughs> you best be doing your research from several sources, William Duggan. I'm doing it from at least three. <laughs> <laughs> Will, how can people contact us if they want to talk to us? What a good question, Laura. People can go on social media. We're talking Twitter and uh, Instagram, where we can be found at Treasures Pod. If they, like my father, wish to email us, that is nationaltreasurespodcast at gmail.com. To give us some money on Patreon, that is patreon.com forward slash national treasures to find this video that you have just finished watching go to youtube and find national treasures podcast channel and click rewatch on this video he's thorough ladies and gentlemen and everybody that's in between those two descriptors thank you for watching we'll see you next week goodbye bye, -bye. <laughs>